ओ मसतो मा सदगमय तमसो मा ज्योतिर्गमय मृत्युर्मा अमृतांगमय ओ शांति 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 ओम लीड अस फ्रॉम द अनरियल टू द रियल लीड अस फ्रॉम डार्कनेस टू लाइट लीड अस फ्रॉम डेथ टू इमोर्टैलिटी ओम फीस 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 द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ माय टॉक टुडे इज इन सर्च ऑफ फ्रेंडशिप फ्रेंडशिप इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन आवर लाइफ इवन साइकोलॉजिस्ट विल से that you should socialize that means don't remain isolated practice of isolation or habit of getting isolated is not good for the health of mind but it is a little bit contradictory in a sense <clears throat> sri ramakrishna has said that uh, if you want to cultivate spirituality you need to go to a secluded place away from your home friends and known people and spend some time in contemplation in thinking of god for from the point of view of spirituality it appears that friendship may be a uh, what is called distraction from the spiritual life but in ultimate sense it is not that that needs to be uh, what is called explored or that needs to be understood so let me first try to impress upon you why friendship it has been uh, considered to be very important in our lives so there are a few sayings that will clarify this position saint thomas aquinas has said there is nothing on this earth more to be prized than true friendship so point is this friendship is good and friendship may be good or bad also so definitely true friendship is covetable that means we need to have two true friends in our lives whatever way we want to live whether a spiritual life or just a householder's life so whatever it may be situation so we should value true friendship then there is another saying a true friend is one who overlooks your failures and tolerates your success a life is a, a combination of success and failure everybody knows that and everybody experiences that so naturally if always uh, we are pointed out our our failures then it becomes very difficult for us to uh, tolerate that and bear that and also it is a mental a, a mind will be disturbed so naturally a friend true friend will always highlight the plus point of the life that means what are the, uh, the which are really successes in the life as it is said you know that the the tumbler is always uh, suppose a tumbler has got uh, half filled with a tumbler is fi- half filled with water so somebody can con- focus on the what is called emptiness that half empty uh, portion and also somebody can really uh, emphasize on the half filled portion so in that way life is like this that is a combination of uh, success and failure so it is very important that for positive living that we focus on the Uh, what is called this uh, half fill portion of the life so true friend actually emphasizes that then there is another saying true friendship is like sound health the value of it is seldom known until it is until it be lost so we value friendship when actually uh, a true friend actually departs that means there is separation so uh, till then actually we do not understand what is the value of true friendship then it has been said true friendship comes when silence between two people is comfortable that is another way of testing a true friendship what happens that usually two neighbors are there they do not talk to each other and naturally we understand that there are some conflict and all those things that is why they do not talk to each other but even such in such situations probably you have not talked for months but still this silence will be comfortable uh, uh, between two friends that is the point so that is the t- test of true friendship 
then people say true friends must always hold hands. But true friends don't need to hold hands because they know the other hand will always be there. That is a sign of a true friend. That means it, it is not necessary that you should be always fraternized with your friend to maintain that true friendship. It will always be there if that guarantee is in your mind, then it doesn't matter whether you fraternize uh, too much or you feel to fraternize uh, too much, uh, that will come to your mind. That means you know for certain that he will be always there. I shall illustrate or rather emphasize these things with some uh, very beautiful Sanskrit quotations. Now, uh, as you know, this friendship, uh, 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 there are many other uh, uh, what is called quotations that I could have shared, but I have to go to further illustrating these things. The point is this, uh, from ancient times, this true friendship was very much emphasized, especially in India. And there used to be, there is still in print this book called Panchatantra, that means a book of five sections. And that book actually started with stories, st the stories of uh, imaginary stories. Imaginary stories means that means fabricated stories with uh, different types of human beings and also animals, birds and all those things. And that made that book very uh, acceptable or interesting for children, young people. So in that way it was framed by one teacher, his name was Vishnu Sharma. Uh, it was a very ancient, that means uh, even before Christ, that book was available in the, in the what is called, uh, uh, in the storytelling story way. And later on when it was translated, it actually spread all over the world. And some people like this book in such a way, they say that probably this is the most translated book after the Bible. So in that way, the stories has spread, and most of you might be knowing a few of the stories in the form of Ish of Fables and such other things. So one story actually stands out uh, in that book, which is uh, uh, which I would like to share. It is a short story, but it illustrates the importance, especially in the young mind. And also uh, for us, that means once you understand the bottom line, so you'll find that it's so important for us to have friends in our lives. So the story says, it is a story of uh, a, a elephants and mice. So there was an abundant city. And that city, uh, because of maybe famine or maybe uh, some other reasons, uh, it, was, uh, uh, it was abandoned by the people and it was a vacant place. So mice came from all over the other sides and they found that this place is very beautiful that means nobody bothers them and so uh, what they did uh, they bo borrowed uh, borrowed all the uh, underground uh, uh, places and in that way they lived there since generations that means they proliferated few came then they pro uh, then they had their children their children their children in that way actually that was a beautiful place where they socialized and they proliferated they, they got their food shared and all those things they did. So, so after certain, uh, when they were living in this uh, what is called happily, it so happened that one elephant leader, that means elephants live in herds, you know, so they have uh, what is called group leader and also they have their followers, that means a huge uh, band of elephants came under the leadership of a uh, what is called their uh, guide. And what they did, they wanted to uh, uh, drink some water. They are look, looking for water. And by the side of that abundant city, there was a lake. So they thought that this lake full of water, let us go. So they went to that uh, water hole. And while going, actually, they uh, walked toward that uh, uh, city. And as you know, elephants have got so heavy weight, so by their... Uh, when they walked over there, they trampled all the, uh, what is called, residences, if you call them, of those uh, mice. And they were also wounded. Some lost their head, some lost their tail, some lost their eyes, some lost their hands, whatever it may be. So they were massacred. And, in, and also those elephants, they are, they are in a group. 
and they found the water hole and they were jubilantly they were just uh, bathing there and uh, they were enjoying all those sports then the leader of this mines thought that uh, the, 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 uh, the residents of that what is called the trampled city uh, uh, gathered together and then uh, the leader of the they complained to their leader that well in this way we cannot live here that means we shall all perish if they if this uh, 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 herd of elephants uh, uh, live here and uh, 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 kill us so they sent one uh, um, emissary that means one of the uh, mice uh, say uh, that uh, well i shall approach the leader of that group and appeal to him uh, so that he they also will live there and we also, we shall also live here so in that way we shall make some negotiation so in that way the uh, the emissary from the mine a group of mines went there and approached the leader and said that you see we are so humble we are so small and you are so big and uh, and uh, you have so much strength and if you live in this way if your people uh, if your group lives in this way none of us will really uh, survive here so we have to strike some balance so the reason is this that you think that you are very powerful and you don't bother that, that uh, we shall uh, our uh, we, if you, if you neglect us there nothing uh, there's no harm uh, uh, to get rid of us uh, whatever you think but you remember that we may be useful to you when you are in uh, in a uh, in a bad circumstances that means some misfortune comes you, we might be useful to you so after saying this he went away and the leader thought that well uh, leaders you know that naturally they they have some intelligence and also they have to be thoughtful uh, they have to think uh, about the future also he thought that well this mice do very insignificant creature but he has he has said a wise uh, he has given a wise counsel that probably uh, in future they might be of some use to us so then he called that my uh, mouse and said that well I, we agree so let us do uh, something so they said that well you follow this path that means they gave a, 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 a demarcated path through which they will go and come and and they are actually they will uh, the mice will not be there so in that way they will also survive and they will also enjoy the uh, their bathing and drink drinking water and in the meantime is after some time it so happened the king of that area he had some uh, he needed some elephants for his uh, as you know in those days horses elephants they were the means of war that means their carriers they were, they had to travel uh, use them for their warfare so there was a shortage of elephants so he sent one person to get elephants from the jungle that means from the forest and that person saw that there is a group of elephants very healthy and very uh, what is called they they are very joyous so he he thought that i shall catch all those elephants and bring to the king and naturally king will be happy and they will be utilized so he put a trap trap means that means big trap and the traps are like this even today they, they are caught in this way that means they make a big hole just like a deep well and then they put uh, some uh, what is called a cover with bamboos and all those and very light material uh, full of uh, leaves and all those things and when the elephants pass over that they do not recognize what it is but because of their weight they just fall into that uh, uh, what is called hole and then they are caught that means they are tied with uh, rope and all those things and uh, uh, dragged dragged in a sense that means they are, they do not have any other means to follow except to follow uh, the uh, the hunter so in that way they are caught so he laid extensive trap uh, in that area to catch all those elephants and they all got caught and uh, then the leader of the elephant thought that well there is no way that we can really survive now so we are all caught probably we shall be killed or taken uh, somewhere so our fate is in balance that means we have to do something then it occurred to him that we have some friends here that means those mice so we uh, if we can get help of them 
probably they will be able to save us. So he called the, uh, what is the leader of, the, the, of that uh, mice group. And they came and immediately they saw that their friends are really in dire consequence. So immediately the band of mice came and not, what is called with their teeth cut all those rope that, that, uh, that actually was holding those elephants and ultimately they let loose those elephants. So they freed him. So this is an example how friendship, that means, is really helpful at the time of dark situation. So this is a, a story that appears in that Panchatantra. And in this context, a little bit diversion, you know, uh, this University of Berkeley is very well known for uh, what is called uh, different academic studies. And during, uh, at, at the beginning of the last century, uh, there was a teacher, his name was Arthur Ryder. And he was there for a long time, from 1925 to 1938, when he died actually. He was a professor of Sanskrit there. And he was from Ohio, and after studying in, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in universities, ultimately he went to Harvard and then he studied and has his PhD and then slowly he came to uh, Berkeley and as an instructor of Sanskrit then became an associate professor then became full professor in that way he uh, taught Sanskrit uh, for a long time in this area that means in Berkeley and one of his illustrious student was Oppenheimer who was the who is considered the father of atomic bomb atom bomb so that two studied together that means Oppenheimer actually studies Sanskrit, that means Sanskrit language, to study Bhagavad Gita. And as you know, some of you might be knowing that he was very much uh, into Bhagavad Gita and he could recite uh, in Sanskrit Bhagavad Gita slokas. So this uh, Arthur Ryder uh, translated many uh, Sanskrit books. And the beauty, beauty means, that means uh, the, the story that I told you in uh, in uh, Panchatantra, that original book of Sanskrit, uh, in poetic language, that means in poetry, it appears in poetry. And Arthur Ryder actually translated these verses in English poetry. That means a uh, translation was also in English. And they are very, uh, those who know English as well as Sanskrit, they'll find that translations are really very good, very good in a sense. That means sometimes in translation you lose the uh, meaning or the import of the original. But in this, in his translation actually, you get very faithful ideas that has been conveyed in that book. That means the spirit of, uh, of the, uh, uh, what is called original Sanskrit is present. So in that way, you won't find any difference when you read the English translation of Arthur Ryder's Panchatantra. And uh, he was, an, uh, this is not the only book that he had translated. He also translated one book which, which is known as the clay card, that means Mrichokotiko. And this Mrichokotiko was, uh, was a drama. And this drama was enacted in Barclay in Sanskrit. And this was first enacted uh, when the amphitheater of Barclay University was in, uh, de dedicated. And it was dedicated by the then president Theodore Roosevelt. And next day after that, uh, after that incident, that Mrichakotiko, uh, what is called drama, was enacted in Sanskrit. And they had invited uh, the, the then president of our, uh, what is called San Francisco Center, Swami Trigunati uh, for the inauguration of that uh, Sanskrit drama. So these are the stories of how Sanskrit stories and Sanskrit has clearly propagated in this country. So ultimately the point is this, that uh, this book, uh, uh, Panchatantra, was very instrumental, or it probably it is still instrumental from the childhood for the, to, to, uh, to, to emphasize the importance of having friends. The book starts with Mitra Veda. Mitra Veda means loss of friends. That means what actions, what situations, in what way actually we lose friends. So that is a uh, that is a sort of a sort of precautionary or a sort of learning what we should not do to lose friends. That uh, that teaching we can get, 
and the second chapter or second uh, uh, what is section is mitro labho that means how to gain friends and that is really very useful for us and that is a subject of my talk today so uh, 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 as i told you that uh, uh, friendship can be uh, acquired by uh, a practice or by following some principles and that is really useful it is not uh, what is called sometimes we feel that too much friends or too many friendship or too many socialization uh, too much is very bad definitely in anything that as it is uh, uh, that we know but definitely it is very important to have people around us uh, to support us under different circumstances so it has been said that we need friends uh, for our survival we need friends for consolation in grief everybody has to experience grief in our lives that means there will is there there were uh, what is called we may not pass in an examination we may have bad health some bad disease might have come or some relatives have died uh, and also probably have uh, what is called failed in some exam did not get a job so all the situations are there that means grief is a part of our life we cannot really deny grief so if somebody says that i shall not in, have any grief in my life it will not really uh, it is not really true that means it is there is grief in our life that is why lord buddha as we see that uh, when he read his life his first experience of sorrow actually struck him so much that he left his life that left his uh, what is called his palace in search of ending uh, finding some solution for the uh, how to end this uh, uh, sorrow so he his first Uh, teaching is that you have to accept that there is sorrow in life and you cannot really deny that so naturally he has given the, his instructions in what way eight steps by which one can get rid of sorrow uh, that we read so the point is that uh, consolation in grief is important and that comes from the friends then uh, in support of distress also that means you may lose something you know this uh, uh, there was a fire in paradise so i still see that people are really suffering that means they have lost their houses and uh, all the means of living and they are scattered here and there and they do not know what to do and even their health it will take long time for them to uh, recover so natural calamities such as this actually brings distress to uh, it may come to anybody any time that is the point it may not come to anybody in, uh, throughout the life but there is always a possibility that distress will come uh, we have to we will be visited by distress then there are positive things also self expression i have done something nice painting so if i do not show to my friends if, if i do not get any appreciation actually i will not feel good that means i shall not be encouraged there is no encouragement that is why it is you will see that there is always words of encouragement if you do a little bit of things uh, that means thank you or what is called you have done a very good job we always say words of encouragement and that is very important for our self expression that means we feel encouraged when this type of appreciation come to us and that is important for the progress in our life and give uh, that gives uh, what is called uh, a sort of satisfaction and also we can progress uh, what we are doing for which actually we are being appreciated then also sharing of joy suppose i win a lottery so what will happen that means if i just keep the what is called the check under my pillow and there is no joy that means it will remain there and i i, I, I cannot think of how i shall utilize and how it will be useful and all those things but when i know that i have something which i can share with some uh, some friends or other people then actually the, i really enjoy the uh, this situation that means joy will be uh, will be uh, what is called uh, help me in uh, working it out so the point is this life is interdependent that means you cannot really or for ordinary people there are exceptional people who can really uh, can be autistic but at the same time very talented so there are exceptions i am just saying uh, for ordinary persons like us so it is definitely interdependent that means if you are taken to an island like robinson crusoe 
and left there forever, actually most of us will not survive. We do not have that type of intelligence or inter what is called uh, uh, acumen to, uh, to utilize the materials and all those things. So slowly, slowly, out of depression, we shall die there. So the point is that we, have, we are really interdependent, interdependent and we have to accept that. And then also we see, uh, as I told you, for spirituality, sometimes it is necessary to go for, uh, for uh, seclusion, which is knowingly we are doing. That means as a part of our practice we are doing, but otherwise actually it is very important to have, as it, it has been so, holy company. That means gathering together and in that way discussing our spiritual thing or sharing our experiences, that is really very important. So we are always indebted to fellow human beings for their sympathy in times of hardship and to the sages and saints for moral and spiritual inspiration. That is why from the, uh, in all spiritual literature we'll see that people gather around spiritual persons and in that way they learn things and that helps them in a spiritual growth. And we are uh, definitely social beings and in that way we have to uh, take care of spiritual uh, growth. So how to, now the point is that everybody cannot be everybody's friend, that is the point. You will probably know uh, by your own experience also. You might be knowing many people but you can really point out the, he is my friend. And in that way you can point, uh, uh, some acquaintance, all acquaintances are not really friends. So there are categories of friends that we find that has been said, especially in Sanskrit literature we find there are some words which describe uh, the different types of friends. So, and they are definitely, uh, all of them are, uh, all of them may not be useful on all circumstances, but some of them will be useful for some circumstances. And if you know that, then it will be very easy for you to handle them and cultivate friendship also or maintain friendship also. So one word is there which is called bandhu. Bandhu, in English actually there is no uh, typical word uh, according to this category. So I'm just saying the Sanskrit words, the meaning is a really friend, that, that is the only common word. So bandhu means a co-traveler or co-religionist or kinsman. Co-traveler means that means suppose you had to wait in the uh, what is called in the uh, airport lounge for a long time. So naturally somebody is reading a book or reading a newspaper or listening some music. So you are sitting together so you become friends. That means probably common interest is there. Probably started talking about today's politics or today's weather. In that way for some time you have a little bit friendship. Then when you board the uh, aircraft so naturally there's persons who are on, on the two sides probably will be able will try to under, uh, inquire from where he is coming, what he is doing, or where he is going. So in that way, chit-chat you will do, and in that way, a, a type of friendship will grow there. So probably if it is a long uh, travel, suppose 16 hours or 18 hours, probably you are traveling from uh, what is called San Francisco to New Delhi, 18 hours, a straight flight is there. So you have to sit tight in the same seat, and the, the, what is co-passengers also will have to sit. So without talking actually, how can you survive? That is the point. So this type of friendship which grows during this traveling is called co-traveler. They are bondhu. That means for the time being you, have, you are helping each other. Probably when you get up, he will also give you space to uh, uh, go to the uh, restroom or whatever it may be. Or food might be shared in that way that de develops. And co-religionist also is there. That means you follow the same path or go to the same church or uh, follow the same uh, uh, spiritual leader. So in that way also co-religionists are there. And then there is surit. Surit is another word which translates, as I told you, the same word by friend. It means friendship through marriage, business and alliance. Businesses, you know that uh, if you are a partner in a business, so naturally you have to be a very true friend. He will give money. And not only that, when uh, you have to plan uh, in what way the business should prosper, what not to do, what to do, how to take the advantage of the situation, all those things are important in business. So you uh, depend on each other in that way and that is another type of friendship. That is called surit. So these type of friends may not be following the same religion. They may not be traveling together also, but still they are friends, that is the point. So that is another type. Then there is sokha, that means emotional support. 
That means there are situations in your life when you are full of sorrow or when you are really delighted. So those things actually open up and in that way uh, you share each other's sorrow and delight and that is called sokha. So it is emotional support of joys and sorrows together. That is the point. Then there is another term which is called boyso. This is also friend. Boyso means the of the friends of same age. You know, senior citizens do not mix well with the what is called teenagers. It is not possible. They may be contacting each other, but you cannot become really friend with a teenager because they are ways of... Uh, you yourself have passed through that uh, life. So you know their thoughts and deeds and their visions and all those things are completely different. But still, you can keep contact with them by what is called by some uh, socialization where there is necessity. And that type of friendship, that means acquaintance, you can say, that is called boyso. And the point is that when this, there is city, senior citizens club also, so there you probably play together cards or what is called chit chat or see movies or think of your what is called uh, how the uh, uh, government is doing for senior citizens or what facilities actually be helpful and uh, your friend is there so you may go together. So in that way, people of same age, when they become friends, they are called boyosso. Then there is another term which is mitro, which is also in English will be translated as friend. That is a friend in prosperity in adversity. That means a friend is a true friend who is, as, as it is said, uh, the friend uh, uh, in need is a, 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 a person who is your friend in uh, need is actually a real friend, friend indeed, as it is called. So let me uh, tell you uh, how actually uh, there are definitely some uh, Sanskrit uh, war, uh, verses for this type of uh, yes. Yes. Now, uh, the point is this, that n now we have to select, that means according to circumstances, we have to select the friends. Uh, how actually in different circumstances we have to select friends? That also have been said. And a real friend is he who stays. Uh, on, on in joyous occasions. This is the definition of mitra, as it is called, that the final, that fifth one that I told you. A real friend is he who stays on in joyous occasions, in danger, in drought, in revolution, in courthouse, in cremation ground too. So, utsave vyasane chaivo durvekse rashtra viplave rajo dware sasane cha jas tishtati sabandhava. That means a person or the persons who actually is uh, always with you, always in a, that means it is not that physically, but in support of you. That means he is sympathetic, will be in sympathy with you under such circumstances. That utsave, that means when you have uh, celebrations and all those things. That means joyous occasions. In danger also, that means there something has happened, mishap had happened to you or to your family. And, uh, so he will be by your side. And in drought also, that means situation in the places that uh, 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 natural calamities are also there. So he will be helpful to you. And the revolution also. Sometimes you know nowadays in, uh, in many countries, people are really fleeing because there is no administration. That means there is no uh, civil war and such other things are there. So that type of situation is there. So a friend who will be supportive of you under such circumstances is a, what is called a mitro. And then in courthouse, courthouse means, you know, it is, of course, ancient term. That means kings used to call somebody for some work or he wanted to something. That means if somebody has done something wrong, he will uh, call you. And in that way, you have to appear before him. And that is a really very fearful or a person uh, who, uh, who does not know why actually king is calling. So naturally, he will be very much nervous. So in such, in such circumstances, actually, if somebody has a friend who will give you support, and uh, that uh, he is, uh, is called a mitro. And finally, in cremation ground also, then when you will die, then the, your body will be taken, so he will be there to mourn you also. So this is the, he is the, uh, what is called, greatest or the uh, best of your friend who is mitro. If, if you can really cultivate 
a person like that uh, to be a friend, then it, it is worth doing. That is the point. So now it comes to a point when we have to find out how to select a friend. That means you have many acquaintances with whom actually will cultivate friendship. And there are ways by which actually friendship can, can be cultivated. You know, there is a book I saw that it is still in print, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And that is, a, that is a book which is very popular. Popular means it is still in print. And probably uh, 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 when it was first printed, I saw the writer, that means Del Carnegie, he was not really interested in writing that book. So he used to give coaching. Coaching in a sense that means there are persons in the business, salesman or probably administrator or whatever it may be, they needed to get uh, some instructions in what way they will conduct their profession. Now for that he actually invented or started a course. So in that way he used to teach, but uh, one of the, uh, uh, what is called manager, manager means probably he was in charge of the sales or whatever it may be, in Simon Schuster, that means great, the well-known publisher, he took a course from him and he was so much benefited that he persuaded Del Carnegie to write, a, write down a book. But he still did not want to write a book. So what he did, that uh, manager, he said that, well, you teach and I, uh, I uh, uh, engage on stenographer. And the stenographer will uh, write down uh, what you are saying. Then you go, uh, edit it and in that way we shall publish. And it was published and 5,000 copies was published, I believe. And then within one month actually they are all gone. Then actually uh, consecutively they started publishing and uh, in that way actually that book became bestseller. For two years actually it was bestseller uh, at that time. In, 1935 or something like that. So in that way, uh, the, the importance of cultivation of friendship, you know, is really uh, very important. How, how important it is that people can really uh, understand and they try to cultivate it. So naturally we need to know uh, how to uh, select a friend for, with, uh, with whom we shall cultivate friendship. So good qualities of a real friend is purity. Then charity, then courage, equanimity, equanimity in pain and pleasure, love and truthfulness. That means it, it has been said uh, that Shuchitang Tagita Shoujang Samanang Sukho Dukhayo Dakshinang Chanu Raktisya Sattatacha Suhid Guna. That means a friend who has these qualities or a person. That means uh, you want to cultivate a friendship with a person, so this person should possess these qualities. What are the qualities? As I told you, first is that purity. That means he should be, uh, character should be pure. Then he should have charity. That means a charitable disposition. That means he uh, shares things, if you call it. Then courage. Courage means then when there is a necessity, he will come forward and in that way help you. And in his life also, he is really upfront uh, whatever, whenever it is necessary. Then equanimity in pain and pleasure. That means he will be, uh, as I told you, in uh, distress as well in uh, time of joy, joy, he will be with you. And love also. That means there should be some sort of sympathy and uh, fellow feeling with you. And of course truthfulness. That is very important. That means he will not hide anything. So it has been said by, uh, uh, by uh, one of the, uh, what is called, uh, one writer, and he has said, a true friend stabs you in the front. That is truthfulness. So it is very well said. This is Oscar Wilde. So he had said that a true friend actually stabs you in front. That means that is the criterion. That is a, a point which shows the truthfulness. Now at the same time, if you have some people will come to you to make friendship, but if you, you have to choose whether you would cultivate friendship with that person, so naturally some negative qualities which have to be shunned. A person who had these negative qualities, you should not cultivate friendship with that person for in the long run. Acquaintance you can keep, but uh, he is not worth cultivation. Uh, uh, he should not be a, a, a good friend of you. So what are the bad qualities of a friend? Does not maintain confidentiality. That is the one thing. That means if you say something and actually spreads the uh, 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 what they have discussed and all those things, private things as you call it. Suppose I have a disease 
and which is really not a good disease to uh, to be disclosed to everybody. So naturally, I uh, disclosed to a friend, and he actually spreads the news that oh, that person has got disease, don't go there, and he is in a bad shape, uh, and uh, it is better not to. Uh, he is going uh, to die or whatever it may be. So that type of uh, what is called confidential is not maintained, and that type of person should be avoided. Begging also. That means he wants this and that all, all the time. Today probably uh, what is called. Uh, some maybe food or money or some uh, materials in that way uh, he will ask that is not a good sign of a good friend then cruelty cruelty means that means when there is a, a, a sort of mental torture cruelty doesn't mean physical torture a mental torture also that means when the time of solace comes actually he does not show or he will say support that yes you are uh, you are he right that you are suffering like this because you have done such and such thing. So God is giving you punishment. So in that way he, he may say, and that is also not a sign of a good, a good friend. Then, of course, there is a restless in mind. His mind is really flittering here and there. He is not really, does not know what to do today, what not to do, and all those things. So he shows a sign of restlessness in mind. Then sometimes anger, lying, these things do not uh, uh, required to be explained and also if he's a gambler that is actually a very bad quality of a friend gambler means that means someday he will ask money he may not sh uh, share wh what he wins but definitely when his uh, necessity of money will be there probably he will think that my friend might be helpful so these are the uh, uh, bad qualities of a friend so in Sanskrit it has been said as I, to as I told you in that book Rahasya bhedo yachana cha nishthur noishthi jang chalat chitta ta krodho nishatta ta duto metas mitrasya dushanam. That means these are the qualities, bad qualities of a friend. So we should be careful if we want to cultivate friendship. And uh, it is good, uh, as I told you, acquaintance is okay, but cultivation of friendship is really uh, maybe disastrous. That is the point with this type of persons. Now, uh, how to cultivate friendship? There are ways also that has been said. The friendship is cultivated through to take, that means exchange of things. That means you have a good book, you read it, and you share that book with your friend, or uh, probably uh, some other things that you have, and he also does in that way. That means the, reciproc the reciprocity, as it is called, is there. So give and take is the uh, way of cultivation of friendship. Then listening also, patient listening, that is very important. Probably he has uh, got some experience and it may not be interesting to you, but you have to be patient to listen to that carefully. So that is important for the cultivation of friendship. Then to talk also, so it's, it should not be one way uh, act. That means he will say something, I will quietly listen and he will not say something that is not really work in the cultivation of friendship. You will also share your thoughts or your experiences or what you have to say with that friend. You should not be afraid of opening your heart, that is the point. So two way it will act. That means both of you should be talking to each other. And also to dine and to entertain. Just go to a cafe and Starbucks and have coffee and what is called donuts and together uh, time to time. And that also is helpful in the cultivation of friendship. And you'll see that it is very important uh, in the political level. So whenever there is a, a what is called negotiation or some uh, between two countries and all those things, you'll see that officers or whatever it may be, they always dine together. That means they will sit one after another uh, to, uh, together. That means one person of this country, another person of other country, in that way they will sit together, they will chit chat and eat and all those things will develop. Why they do that? Because that is, the, that is very important in the cultivation of friendship. So in our small way, in our individual life also, it is very important to share uh, food with, with each other for the cultivation of friendship. And also in entertain, ent entertainment also. Suppose you go to see a ball game or you go to see a fair, you go together, and in that way also friendship can be cultivated. So these are the stories uh, that, uh, that is very ancient stories. And as you know, that 
uh, uh, what is called, we can learn and uh, relearn, that is the point. Sometimes we uh, forget these uh, uh, teachings that we have learned in a young age, but they, are, they actually is important for us throughout our life. That means you cannot really uh, do, uh, 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 if you want to cultivate, actually you have to uh, uh, recover these old teachings. Now, in the context of spirituality, as I told you, friendship is very important, and I find that it is very true, in the, especially in, the, in our order, Ramakrishna order. You see, uh, the, the, there are, uh, it was started by Sri Ramakrishna, and naturally Sri Ramakrishna, when he started teaching, many people came to him, and how did they come to Sri Ramakrishna, and they, how, they, how did they benefit by his association? you'll find they are, most of them were brought by friends. First is this, that means when we read the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, written by Mahanar Gupta, nicknamed M. So how did he come to Sri Ramakrishna? He came through a friend, that means he was visiting one of, uh, one of his brother, brother-in-law. And he lived not too far from the Dakshineswar Kali temple where Sri Ramakrishna lived. And that brother-in-law had a uh, neighbor, and that never, uh, because uh, 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 they knew, knew each other, so uh, Mahanar Gupta was staying there for a few days, so he told that, that neighbor, his name was Siddheshwar, so he said that, well, let us go take a walk in, in the garden house of Rani Rasmani, a, a, a garden temple of Rani Rasmani. They went just to walk in the garden, not to meet Sri Ramakrishna even. So they went there and uh, they walked there and ultimately when they were walking, that person said that, I have heard that there is a uh, saintly person here, would you like to meet him? So they went and met Sri Ramakrishna. And when he met Sri Ramakrishna, Sri Ramakrishna actually asked a few questions. Who are you, what do you do, where do you live, all those things. And in the meantime actually Sri Ramakrishna felt that that M uh, had some spiritual potentiality. So he said that, well, you please come again and we shall talk. So in that way actually you see that there is no point that there is, it is a chance meeting of Sri Ramakrishna which was, uh, 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 that friend brought him, that uh, he met, uh, met Sri Ramakrishna and in that way his life was completely changed and not only that he wrote that book uh, uh, which actually is changing the lives of many, many people. So this is the great advantage of uh, having friendship. In case of Swami, uh, other Swamis also you see, Swami Vivekananda also, he had the opportunity. And especially Swami Shivananda is a good example. He used to study uh, yoga. And after studying this Patanjali yoga and all those things, he learned there is something like Samadhi, Nirvikalpa Samadhi. That means that uh, final experience of meditation. And he thought, and he talked to his friends that, well, I read these things. He, was, he used to live in a what is called dorm, a bachelor's uh, dorm, because he was unmarried at that time and he was in Delhi at that time, not in his native place. He was doing some job. So while discussing, he said, uh, uh, said that, well, nowadays I think this type of experience is not really possible. In ancient times, probably used to, sages used to have this experience. So the friend said, no, if you want to see uh, really uh, this Nirvikala Samadhi, you can go to uh, one person named Sri Ramakrishna in Calcutta, he lives in Dakshineshwar. So if you go to him, you will see that this is still possible in this age. So he took that point from his friend. And next time actually when he visited Calcutta, he was eager to meet Sri Ramakrishna. Then he found out that where he was living in Calcutta, in a relative's place, and he found that on a particular day Sri Ramakrishna will be visiting a neighbor's house. So he was interested and and I talked to the neighbor, so he was invited there and was present there. And not only that, when he sat and when Sri Ramakrishna came and started talking, he talked that particular topic, he, was, he started talking about Nirvikalpa Samadhi. And not only that, he went into Nirvikalpa Samadhi, that means while talking, he was, his, uh, what is called, his nature was such that when the thought came, he went into Nirvikalpa Samadhi. So this Swami Shivananda, at that time he was young Taraknath, so he was, perplexed. So what he did actually, he was, there's a crowd, so he pushed the people uh, uh, in front of Sri Ramakrishna, just came uh, near him, that means at, the, at his feet, and started gazing, that means to his heart's content, he actually saw what is Nirvikalpa Samadhi. 
So you see, just a friend, actually how these connections actually worked and became a, uh, a disciple of Sri Ramakrishna, become a great monk by himself. In that way, you will see that friendship actually has helped many of the direct disciples of Sri Ramakrishna to come to him. Now I would like to conclude my talk about friendship with a story. This story actually, uh, uh, this story, I could not find the origin of the story, but I second hand, that means it was quoted in one, one of the articles, and from there actually I shall share with you. It is like this. There was a pious man, and that pious man actually had friends. So as I told you, that means uh, in, in ancient times, if king actually uh, calls you, it means that you have done something wrong, probably he will punish you. That was the, always in the mind of the young person. That means he, out of bolt of the blue, uh, uh, how the king will call me. So he, has, he becomes very nervous. So this pious man uh, was called by the king, and he was really very nervous. He could not really figure out why the king will call me. I have not done something, anything wrong. So he took the help, talked to his friend, the best friend, that uh, you please come with me. And the uh, king has called. I am feeling very nervous. So if you uh, uh, stay with me uh, when I go there, it will be helpful. That means I, get, I shall get some strength. So the friend told him uh, that, well, king has called you. You go. I am not really, well, I, I don't want to go there. Uh, I do not know uh, what is in his mind. The king is known for some, what is called, uh, uh, some strange ideas and all those things. That means he's not very reliable. So he actually uh, did not go uh, with, the, uh, with his friend, that pious person. Then he went to his second best friend. So the second best friend uh, also uh, told him that, well, I understand your difficulties, but uh, you see I have such and such tasks to do, so I do not have time. So you please go. I am sure that nothing will happen to you. Then, then he had a third friend who was not very well known to him, and just an acquaintance type of person. And when he said that, well, can you please come with me? I am feeling very nervous to, uh, to, to have an audience with the king. He has called me. So he immediately said, yes, definitely I am coming with you. Let us go together. So in that way he went to, his, to the king. And that was really helpful. So we can figure out that who is really a true friend. Now the point is this, this story has a, a what is called underlying meaning. That is the object of my telling this story. This is like this. The pious man in the story represents the human individual in distress. That means when the distress comes, so actually uh, that is a situation uh, exemplified this pious person's situation. The king represents death and the summons, the call of death. That means king has called, that means the summons have come. That means at the time of death, someone and death has come. So that is the king has called. The palace gate stands for the graveyard. There is a palace gate, that means where you can know, that means uh, 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 where the people are cremated, so that remembrance of that is the graveyard. And the best friend, the first friend, if I call it, the best friend represents money and possessions. That means you have to, they will not go with you. That is the point. You have a lot of money, you have a lot of possessions, but at the time of death, when the call comes, actually, you, that will, they will not go with you. They say goodbye to a person at death and never comes out of the house to accompany him. The next best person, that means the, uh, another person whom he thought his best friend, represents family and friends. They will also not go with you. They will give some good words, good counsel and all those things, but they cannot accompany with you. They accompany as far as the graveyard. That means probably they will go to the uh, uh, where you look cremated. At the time they will be there, but they cannot really accompany you at the time of death, and then leave. And the la least intimate friend is the memory of one's good deeds and performed with selflessness for the benefit of others. That thought that what you had done, good things in your life, those thoughts actually will accompany you. So at that time, if you remember them you will get the strength. That means you will face the death without any difficulty. So they are the best friends. 
So the memory of good deeds becomes one's sole support in the fearful and solitary journey hereafter. Such a memory is a true and trusted friend. The memory of a good deed is like the messenger of truth and escorts the soul to the realm of truth. So in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna has said, Salpam alpasya dharmasya trayote mahato bhayat. That means even very little of this dharma, that means selfless action, sets a man, uh, sets a man from the great fear. So this is the uh, story, uh, 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 illustrative story of what is the value of a good friend. Physical friend, at the same time good deeds also acts as a good friend at the time of dire situation.